Hi, this is Mark Isaac from the Guru Garage here in St. Louis, and today we're going to go through uh, ball joint inspection procedures. So we've got a few vehicles to look at for the different types of suspension systems you'll see out there. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is a traditional McPherson strut type vehicle, and to put the ball joint in a proper position to check, uh, we jack up under the body of the car and let the suspension hang down. That basically unloads the lower ball joint so we can check for looseness. On this type suspension, the specification uh, called for by the manufacturer is any perceptible movement fails the ball joint. So we basically grab the tire at 6 and 12 o'clock and then move your hands around the wheel because sometimes the looseness will show up as your hands are in different positions around the wheel. Some vehicles that uh, are McPherson strut type suspensions have a different procedure on checking ball joints, and that is they actually have you break the taper loose and put an inch pound torque wrench on the stud and rotate the stud and measure the inch pound resistance of the stud in the housing to determine if the ball joint needs to be replaced. So refer to uh, the manufacturer's specifications that are available either online or in a book form and uh, follow that procedure. Okay, now we're going to look at a different system for inspecting ball joints. This is a Type 1 vehicle, so it has an upper and lower control arm with the spring on the lower control arm. So that makes the lower ball joint a load carrier and the upper ball joint a follower. The specification uh, for this particular year vehicle is that the lower ball joint is allowed to have uh, a certain amount of movement vertical and the upper ball joint, the specification is any perceptible looseness and it fails. So to put this vehicle in the proper position for checking is that first we will support underneath the lower control arm as far outboard as possible with our jack or our, or our lift. So that'll basically unload the knuckle so that any looseness uh, can be seen between the two ball joints. Another thing we do is because this vehicle has traditional wheel bearings that can be adjusted is to take any movement out of the wheel bearings, uh, we'll want to lock the brakes on. So we lock the brakes on and that'll take out any slight movement that might exist in that wheel bearing assembly. So to check the lower ball joint to the specification, we'll take a pry bar underneath the tire and move that wheel assembly up and down with moderate force. We'll be installing our dial indicator between the knuckle and the control arm on the inboard side and check to see if this doesn't exceed the specification. This particular vehicle is is set to 80 thousandths vertical on the lower ball joint. So it can have looseness in it up to 80 thousandths, still be considered safe. Once it's beyond that spec, it's considered unsafe. The upper ball joint to check is we grab the tire at 6 and 12 o'clock and observe that upper ball joint for any perceptible movement. So be sure to check the vehicle you're working on as far as uh, manufacturer specifications on looseness tolerance and also checking procedures. Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, the manufacturer's procedure on checking ball joints on this solid axle vehicle. Uh, this solid axle uses two ball joints on the steering knuckle, uh, the lower being the load carrier, the upper being the follower, and the procedure on this one is to check for radial movement. So radial movement is side to side movement and the manufacturer tells us to jack up under the axle, take the vehicle off the ground, and with our dial indicator mounted on the inboard side of the knuckle, the specification for this year vehicle is 31 thousandths of an inch of movement at the bottom of the knuckle for the lower ball joint and the top of the knuckle for the upper ball joint. So to check the bottom ball joint, we just grab the bottom of the tire with our indicator mounted on the inboard side, lower side of the knuckle, move the wheel assembly in and out. And any movement that we have, we compare it to the specification and the same applies to the upper. We move our dial indicator to the upper part of the knuckle, grab the top of the tire, and move the knuckle in and out. So these procedures might be different for other manufacturers, but uh, similar design on solid axle vehicles. Hope you found these tips helpful and uh, visit us again. Thank you.